Hello ladies and gentlemen, ESXZeke here again today to bring you Monster Hunter Try, and today I will be let's play in with a friend of mine, Don. Say hi. Hello internet. Anyways, that's it for my horrible intro that you have to hear every, every time. So, Don is the expert at this game, so he'll have to tell us what, he's, what we're doing today. Uh, well, we're going to be focusing mostly on key requests, which currently is hunting a great joggy and a curl paco. Probably not going to bother with the boring quests like collecting guts or anything like that, but we will let you know which key quests those are. So speaking of key quests, they're the quests you need to do to advance in the online mode, and this is a let's play of the online mode, so I'll tell you the first one you have to do is Sunken Treasure, which is delivering 15 red coral stones, but it kind of sucks, so I'm just going to go over, actually I'll let Don start the quest out here, because... Right. Said. He's the expert. I just like killing monsters. <laughs> Don't we all? So oh. today we'll be going through the first two of the key quests, other than the sunken treasures. We'll be doing Help the Hunter, which is hunting a great jaggy, which you guys may or may not know yet, and Playing with Fire, where we hunt a Kurupeko. Did I finally pronounce that right? Yep. Thank and God. Actually, we're going to have to get you to start the quest, because I don't have either of them in my roster. <laughs> oh, really? What do you have in your roster? Um, nothing we need. <laughs> I see. So, you might be looking at us and thinking, if you know this game, that our gear is a bit overleveled for where we are. And that is entirely true, because we mostly beat the offline before we even bothered starting with the online, because... Online, all the quests are about four times harder than offline. And they're four times harder no matter how many people you have with you. So that's our reasoning behind getting all this crazy gear before starting to hunt a great jaggy. <laughs> so just for information's sakes, I'm wearing... um. Legi <laughs> the name, I, the armor of a monster whose name I can never pronounce. Lagiacris? Le Lagiacris. Lagiacris. Thank you. And I'm using an upgraded version of a Rust Lance, which I have by complete chance. This lance is not usually available until you happen to find it and pick it up out of a mining spot. And I just got lucky. Do you remember what it's called after I've upgraded it? Uh, nope. <laughs> okay, and what are you wearing for armor? I'm rocking a Carl Paco set. <laughs> Something I went straight to the plus game with in the first time I played this. And just out of curiosity, because I've never seen it before, what in hell's name is that thing on your back? That would be the Crystal Switch Axe. That Kay. is kind of awesome. Yeah, the first time I beat this game I used nothing but great swords, so I figured I'd switch it up a bit. <laughs> the one thing about this game and online is I find that there are a few latency problems and I've, and your partner always seems to run around like a complete douche. Now, this isn't all the time and sometimes they could be doing it on purpose, but... Ow! <laughs> Careful. Uh, this is one inconvenient about fighting tiny things like the Juggy or the Curl Paco, is that they're always very close to your hunting companions and oh will often knock them on their ass. This lance <laughs> is super slow. Well, this is my first time using this lance, and I've just noticed that it seems to attack slower than anything else I've ever used. Hopefully the crazy damage that it has makes up for that. So one thing I've always really enjoyed about this game is how epic they make fighting anything. Like, in other games this is the first really mark monster that you'll fight. In other games it would probably take you like five minutes and you use, use some potions, you wouldn't feel any desperation at all. But in this game it's just an awesome time all around. I think I'm mixing up my um, reviewing and let's play in etiquette because I'm getting advice from both sides of the board here. 
I feel like I'm trying to do a review of the game. So, I would give you strategy information, but to be honest, I'm not that great with the strategy at this game, and for the Great Jaggy, I'm pretty sure the most advanced strategy comes down to beat the hell out of it anyways. Pretty much. Like, I could tell you... Watch for it to turn to its side and block or dodge out of the way before it body checks you and knocks you over. Ow! But I think my biggest risk in this fight is being destroyed by Don over here who keeps hitting me with his switch axe. I'm sorry, it's just too big. <laughs> ah! This, um, this specific monster in the offline mode, and this is why we've leveled our gear so much, usually takes me about a minute to kill, at the very most. A few- oh god, and I could actually die- I died. I died to the jag, yeah, I'm very sorry about that. Bad news bears. I tried to roll out of the way. Oh, I'm just gonna run around like an ass for a little bit until you get back here. <laughs> Thank you. So, in this game, they're pretty unforgiving about dying. Like, you can die, but everyone in... You have three deaths to share throughout your party, is that right? Three? Yep. And if you use those three deaths, you... The quest fails. Reward drops to zero, and you have to start over again. <laughs> and it can be a really huge pain in the ass if you're playing with people you don't know and they die three times. If you're playing with friends and things start looking grim, you can just abandon, and then you get to keep all your resources. Yeah. I didn't actually know that part, but that's why I have Don here. Sorry, Don, I'm just using you for your knowledge. Alright, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> so, the reason every time I hit it has red lines everywhere is that's Dragon Elemental. I assume what they mean by Dragon Elemental is crazy red electricity? Pretty much. <laughs> I've never seen Dragon Element before. And then so he spontaneously dies. Good job. <laughs> I guess I wasn't really expecting that. Usually the monster will limp off and run away before you have a chance to actually kill it. And I'm not even sure why I'm harvesting this thing, really. Do you need any Jaggy Scales for anything? Nah, but I can always sell them. That's true. <laughs> this game does turn into a bit of a horde fest. If you, um... If you hunt monsters, you never know whether you want to keep them or sell their parts, or whether you're going to need it to upgrade a crazy lance later, so I end up keeping just about everything. The thing with the lance is it isn't the most mobile of... of equipment. You can see here, all I can really do is jump side to side or jump back. <laughs> Excellent, so that was our first quest. So we're going to go through one more of this Let's Play because I figure, hell, why not? This is something that happens after every quest. You get quest rewards, and you get some for wounding different parts of the Jaggy. And where do those show up again? Are those the second row? Yeah, which? Um, the wound, the wound rewards. Ah, uh, yeah. So those show up in this second row here. And here. And these are rewards you get for the subquest. Which we accidentally completed one subquest. You can break parts on a lot of the monsters. But we did not even go for the other one. And I got hunter rank increased. I've sort of cheated here and increased my hunter rank on my own, but I'm going to start from the beginning anyways. I did this earlier before I even thought I was going to be Let's Playing. <laughs> no worries, I'll catch up. Oh, by the way, you can sit at this table right in front of that quest counter to get your food buffs. Ah, yes. Food! A whole new basket of shrimp. I guess I'll call it. Mm -hmm. Shrimp. Actually, I wish I could have a basket of shrimp. That sounds delicious. But anyways, in this game you can have um, the cats prepare you food, but I guess here it's not really the cats. And 
Basically what you do is you choose an ingredient, and I think the fresh ingredients are more likely to give you buffs. And depending on the two ingredients you choose, it will have a different effect. I know for a fact that meat plus um, alcohol equals attack up and health up. So that's what I'm going to go for. And as you can see, there's some random skills there, which you may or may not get. So I'm going to go for this feline riser, which gives you better immunity getting up. There's also a few that you can get no matter what the random skills say, and those are Lucky Cat, Crazy Lucky Cat, Ultra Lucky Cat, and some carving bonuses, Feline Carver low and Feline Carver high. The Lucky Cats increase your quest reward, and the Carver increase, can increase the amount of times you can carve off of a monster. So I know I should have been eating during that, and I apologize for wasting your time with that screen, but <laughs> you guys are just going to have to bear with it. Oh, I got Feline Riser high, that is awesome. So, next we are going to do Plane with Fire, which is actually over here. So here we fight our first Wyvern. And this might actually be... I quite like it. It's sort of a silly dragon. Wyvern, I guess. Not really a dragon either. But quite a lot of fun to kill, and quite a lot of fun to wound its pride by attacking when it's inflating its chest. And you'll understand what I mean shortly. Sorry I'm not leaving you much chance to talk, Don. No worries. But I feel like I should probably talk constantly as I'm trying to do a Let's Play. Uh, Maybe it's a bad choice. It's usually good to keep the commentary going. Yeah. Probably. Give the people something to listen to. Gotta entertain your audience. Gotta entertain your audience. I'm also going to apologize for uploading this in 720p. I know the highest um, we can get is 720i or 480p, but YouTube does awful things to videos that you upload in things other than 720p. Really awful things. So I'm just going to eat my rations here, which increase my stamina. Stamina goes down as you fight monsters and as you just sort of exist in the land. And as you can see, I have some red aura around me. And I also have higher health than I did last time. While I'm just sitting around, I might as well explain some of what's on screen here. If you see the timer in the top left corner, that's our total time limit for a mission. As you can see, it doesn't appear to be moving in the slightest. And that's just because they give you about 50 minutes for every mission. Are some of them longer, Don? Uh, it's usually one hour. Usually one it's hour. your max timer. Okay. But for quests like this, you rarely need anywhere near that amount of time. Oh, oh it's taking off. Oh, well, watch the shadow to see where it's flying off to. Yep. Yeah. So, the unfortunate thing about a game called Monster Hunter is it involves a decent amount of actually hunting the monster, as well as fighting it. Can be kind of a killjoy at times. Get into an exciting engagement, start making progress, then the monster picks up and runs away. Actually, one of the major complaints <laughs> some critics have about this game is that it is too realistic. It is kind of like what adventurers would be doing in their spare time between rescuing the princess. There's a lot of, like, picking mushrooms, growing herbs. Ow! Defending yourself from your friends who are attacking you. Hey, hey, you brought that lance right on my backside. That was your own fault. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> so let's just get a good view of this thing here. Now, it has a few, a decent move set, but only one that I find really dangerous. And it has a bit of a tell. It will first hit its um, two wings together. And if you can see on the tip of each wing, that those are flints. So it can ignite what it just spat out. Or, do you know exactly what the explanation is for its fireball? Uh-uh. 
it's not really, it just kind of smashes its wings together. At least as far as I can tell. <laughs> I'm fairly, my theory anyways is that it ignites that stuff that it was spitting out at us earlier. That makes sense too, I guess. We are actually doing slightly better on this than on the Great Jaggy, surprisingly enough. Though, I still have to say, that little uh, smashing its wings together thing, you can totally casually walk around him when he does that. That's true. But sometimes <laughs> he jumps around. <laughs> and, oh man. I was not quite expecting to destroy this thing so badly. I just knocked it over twice in a row. He's still just a little girl back at all. One of the things I really enjoy about this game, and I know I say that a lot, but I really love this game. I'm the type to like games like this where there's a lot of farming and realism and the fights are quite difficult and the controls are awkward as hell. Anyways, but one of the things I really love about this game is that you can get different sizes of monsters. Like, um, this one, it's harder to tell, but... It can, oh god, Great Jaggy. <laughs> but it can range from, um, range from being of a really small size to a really big size. But for some other monsters, it can range from like 17, 1700 meters? Is it meters that they're in? Centimeters. Uh, centimeters, yeah. Yes. Man, 1700 meters would be ridiculous. 1700 meters to like 3000. I said meters again. Centimeters. <laughs> Oh, get it! Yes. So that was its taunt thing, and um, when it does that, if you attack it in the inflated pouch, it will drop a wyvern's tear. It's quite often part of your quest to get this wyvern tear and to deliver it. So, whoa! You just teleported. Over. Are you hunting the jaggy? Yes. He's annoying. I want him dead. Well, oh, fair enough. <laughs> If you hunt something that is not your main objective, it will actually give you extra hunt, free hunt bonuses at the end of your mission, which can be quite nice. But in this case, we probably don't need anything that it will give us. I'll just keep hunting this. So it's drooling right now, and I'm... Is that a sign that it's low on health or hungry? Because it can be a sign of either, depending on the monster. Uh, that means it's hungry. It's out of stamina. More or less as we get. A lot of its attacks become crippled now. Okay. <laughs> um, can you tell us what type of a crap attacks a craps? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, I think it's flints get nerfed. It can't quite make as much fire as it used to. You can make it drop another tier, I think. Oh, uh, never mind. This is one of the most stupidly behaving um, Kurapekos I've ever seen, actually. They usually don't just stand there and take this much abuse. Quite often they're flying around and just being general assholes about not being hit. So, like I said, every monster has breakable parts. On the Kurapeko, I'm pretty sure you can break its um, flints and its beak, and that's all. Do you know of anything else that can be broken? Nope, just the flints and the beak. Okay. But apparently it's a complete pansy when it comes to not being knocked down by a spear. <laughs> oh, I just broke its beak in the middle of a flint attack. That's always satisfying. <laughs> the other thing that you should note with the Kuropeko is that when it screams like that and inflates its belly, it actually summons nearby monsters. It is imitating other monster calls. And right now that isn't such a problem because the only thing it can summon is the Great Jaggy, but what's the worst thing it can summon? Devil Show. Yeah, it can summon some of the later dragons that are ridiculously hard to try to come to its assistance. And they just come off screen and they're like 80, and 80 times your size and you're... <laughs> You're kind of sitting there thinking, oh god, please no, please no, please no. <laughs> Anyways. Probeco, right now, not a problem. 
generally complete deck. This game's version of a Yon Kaku. <laughs> oh yes. I remember the Yon Kaku. He was from the first game and I think he was more fiery, wasn't he? Um neither of us paintballed that, did we? Uh uh. Probably going to area seven. Yeah. Don't want to end this joggy though. Damn. He's just going to area six. So other signs of weakness include limping like you just saw. And we're gonna just destroy that Joggy so it doesn't interfere in the Kuropeko fight anymore. And, like I said, latency problems. As you saw, the Joggy just teleported to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dawn teleported to the Joggy. A lot of fun all around. Fortunately, the latency problems don't really matter, because you, you can basically just sit around and play your own game. But... You can't really expect any better when it comes to playing online on the Wii. The Wii tends to fail absolutely for online. What is that move you keep doing? That is the Switch Axe's special attack. I never actually managed to do that. Maybe that's why I suck so much at the Switch Axe. It's uh, tapping the plus button once you have it in sword form. I see. It generally does a high elemental charge blast. <laughs> what does it do for a non-elemental weapon like the crystal sword? Actually, the crystal weapon is dragon element. Oh, is it? Well, that makes sense. It explains why you're giving off the same light that I am. But I can only give it off during that charge attack because I don't have the awakening of this sword. Oh, where did it go? I'm going to say... What a dick. Hmm. Either area 9, maybe area 10. Area 9. Wouldn't it be faster to jump off the cliff in that case? Yes, it would. I'm going <laughs> back up there. I wasn't paying attention to its shadow when it flew away. Well, I thought I paid attention to it. I thought it flew this way. Apparently we spent a bit too much time dicking around with the, um, with the jaggy. If you do not track the monster by throwing a paintball at it, which... The quest usually supplies you with paintballs. It can... <laughs> it just came back here again. Okay, I'm gonna paintball it. They can get pretty clever in evading you, and I'm pretty sure some of them evade you on purpose if they're not being tracked. And go to areas that you would not normally expect them to go to. Ow! So anyways, this is a good, good situation to show you how to get rid of fire. As you can see, I'm on fire. There's two good ways to get rid of this. One is to roll once in water. Which, oh, thankfully there's a big pool right there. The other is to roll three times on more solid ground. There are a few weapons that are not appreciated online. I personally don't mind any of them, but the switch axe is one of them. Basically, a lot of weapons can cause... They don't damage, but they cause knockback on your allies. As you can see right there. And some people will rage way too hard if you use them and accidentally hit them. There are specific strategies available for not hitting your allies, though. Are either of us using the longsword? No. Okay, we're going to have to do a special episode demonstrating the longsword. Get it? Yes! <laughs> Good job. <laughs> His beak is broken. I kind of want to break that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not great at hitting the beak. Not either with a switch axe. Not the easiest target for this weapon. There it is. Never oh. mind. <laughs> well, um... Monsters will fly away, especially wyverns, and go to their nests to sleep after you've killed them, and that's what it was trying to do right there and why it was limping away. But I did not want to let it get away with that. That is what we call cough blocking. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Play Monster Hunter Try for the Wii. And I hope to see you guys next time. If you guys would like, please, in the comments, 
tell us what you'd like to see, if you'd like to see different armor sets, different things, maybe a playthrough of the single player mode, which would be hard, but I could do anyways. Or, you know, any specific armor or hunts. You can leave that in the comments or in the form where I'm going to be posting this. And I'll see you guys next time. Say bye, Don. Take care, everybody.